Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a crime, drama, history film from 2008 that is based on a true story, titled 21. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ben, an MIT mathematics major, is accepted into Harvard, but cannot afford the $300,000 tuition. He applies for a scholarship that would cover the entire cost, but is informed that only one of the 76 applicants will get it. Despite having high grades and test scores, he faces fierce competition. He needs to write an essay and is told by the director that the scholarship will only go to whichever student dazzles him. Ben works at a men's clothing store with his best friend Miles and is promoted to assistant manager which makes $8 an hour. He tells Miles about the essay and that he has no idea what to write about, because he hasn't done anything remarkable. Ben is frustrated because even though he has crushed exams, taken extracurriculars, and given up everything, the one thing stopping him from going to Harvard is money. They meet up at a bar with Cam to celebrate Ben's birthday. The three of them are trying to win a science competition by building a self-driving car. Back at MIT, a professor, Mickey Rose is giving a lecture on nonlinear equations. He asks the class to explain Newton's method. Ben mentions that Newton actually stole the method from Joseph Raphson, who published the same method 50 years earlier. The professor is impressed and gives him a chance for extra credit so he challenges Ben with the Monty Hall problem, which he solves successfully. As class ends the professor checks Ben's most recent test result to see 97%. Ben Miles and Cam are at a gym playing basketball. He notices a girl he likes, Jill. She waves and he waves back, but turns out she's waving at someone behind him. Later that day as Ben is studying a fellow student comes up and asks to follow him, he's a bit confused but does so. He's brought to a room that has some students sitting at a blackjack table and Professor Rosa standing at a blackboard. He tells Ben to call him Mickey and invites him to join the MIT blackjack team. Ben is introduced to the team consisting of Kiana, Fisher, Choi, and Jill. They explain that blackjack is beatable and that they go to Las Vegas every weekend and holiday and that a spot on their team has opened up, because a previous member got a job at Google. Ben is hesitant because he's afraid to step out of his comfort zone. Jill says, come on Ben, it'll be fun. They go back and forth, Ben coming up with excuses as to why he can't do it, and Mickey trying to convince him, but Ben ultimately declines. The next day Jill shows up at his job and says she's looking for a tie. Ben tries to help her pick one, but she's actually there to try to convince him further, saying that he should experience more things in life. Ben finally shows up at the blackjack club and starts learning the system. High cards have a value of minus one, neutral cards have no value and low cards are plus one. He practices counting cards and memorizes the words that the team has assigned to each high count. Later, at a bar they explain the roles of every member of the team. Kiana Choi and Jill are the spotters, they sit at various blackjack tables only betting the table minimum and keeping count. When one of the tables reach a hot count the player has an edge over the dealer so they signal Ben or Fisher who are the big players, who then stumble over to the table like some drunk rich kid and bet big. When the deck cools down, the big player leaves the table. Ben shows up to a dodgy alleyway for a trial run. He goes inside an underground casino where his spotters are already sitting at tables. Choi signals him that the deck is hot and Ben sits down at the table. Choi then uses the word magazine in a sentence to inform Ben that the count is plus 17 and he starts making big bets. He's winning a lot and is exhilarated, smiling constantly, when suddenly a bag is thrown over his head and he's dragged into a back room. A deep voice keeps asking him, what's the count? He acts clueless but eventually gives in and tells them it's plus 18. Turns out this was a test whether he can keep the count under pressure and is officially welcome to the team. The next day they fly to Las Vegas. They enter a hotel suite where Mickey gives each member a new identity and a disguise. He further instructs Ben to act like they don't know each other and always order water, tonic and lime and appear a little drunk. At the Red Rock Casino, Kiana signals Ben. He looks to the right and sees Fisher and Choi at the next table. He sits down and exchanges $10,000 for chips and after taking a sip of her drink, Kiana exclaims too sweet, which indicates that the count is plus 16. Ben doubles down on eights on his first hand, the dealer goes over 21 and Ben wins, profiting $4,000 already. On the next hand he gets a blackjack and wins another $3,000. He goes on playing at the casino on different tables, stacking chips along the way. Seeing Ben winning so much, Fisher stares in disbelief. Come morning, Troy signals it's time to leave and they head out. The next day Ben is woken up by Jill, who throws him his cut. She tells him he did good, came in quick off the count, wasn't afraid to play big, got out when he was supposed to and made more money than Fisher. He tells her that he was pretty nervous at first, but after a while it felt easy. 
They are called for a team meeting. Fisher shows up drunk. Mickey is pissed, because on three occasions, Fisher played into a cold deck even when spotters let him know that. Mickey tells Ben he did good and to keep it up. Fisher utters, beginner's luck, and denies that he played wrong, but Mickey puts him in his place. Ben is back at the dorm and stashes his cut from the weekend, $16,700 in the ceiling tiles. Suddenly Miles and Cam walk in and he pretends he's just jumping on the bed. Miles asks where he was this weekend and says he called like 15 times. Ben makes up a lie about helping a cousin move and says that he forgot his cell phone. All three decide to go to a bar for some drinks. Ben sees Jill at the counter and offers to buy her a beer. His two friends are stunned and keep staring at them. He goes to tell them to stop acting weird to not freak her out, but they say that they are probably more freaked out than she is. Ben and Jill are on a train. He asks her whether she came into the store to ask him to join the team because Mickey asked her to. She says that he's the smartest guy she knows and that's why he's on the team and that's why she went to the store. He tries to kiss her but she pulls back. He is embarrassed and starts apologizing, but she tells him to not worry about it and that she just doesn't want to complicate things because they work together. She says it's her stop so she gets off the train. Over the coming weekends, the team has flown to Las Vegas Valley and Ben comes to enjoy his luxurious life as a high roller, but there's still one thing he can't get off his mind. Every trip he makes more money than in five years at his old job. In Boston he is just Ben Catbell, but in Vegas he can be whoever he wants to be. It was too good to be true and felt like it was never going to end. The head of security, Cole Williams, has been monitoring the team and begins to focus on Ben, suspecting that he may be counting cards. Turns out he is also a card counter, but prefers to be on the other side of the hustle. For the first time, life was easy for Ben, nothing cost too much and nothing was out of reach. College parties with frat dudes were upgraded to something more interesting. Fisher becomes extremely jealous of Ben's success and one day, while drunk, sits down at Ben's table and starts dropping hints that they know each other. Meanwhile Williams is watching them on tape and notices that Kiana only bets table minimum and that Ben only appears after she gives him a signal. He goes to confront them, but Fisher has caused a commotion and they leave before Williams can get to them. At a bar, Mickey removes Fisher from the team. He informs the rest that the casino is changing their chips in 24 hours, which means that they need to exchange them for cash, which they can't do because of Fisher's antics. Ben suggests they use the dancers to exchange the chips for them. Mickey calls him a genius. Later that day Jill invites Ben to her suite and they have a romantic night and make love. Ben's new secret life causes him to neglect his role in the science competition, which estranges him from his friends. He shows up late to a meeting with them and gives them the wrong part for their project. They are disappointed and tell him that he isn't as committed to the project as they are and decide to keep going without him. During the next trip to Las Vegas, he is emotionally distracted. He gets an unlucky outcome on a big hand. He lets his emotions get the better of him and fails to walk away from the table when signaled by Kiana. Jill steps in and tries to get him out, but fails. He ends up losing an extra $200,000. Mickey is furious and even when Ben apologizes, saying that this is his first mistake and others try to back him up, Mickey leaves the team and says that Ben will have to pay the $200,000 he lost one way or another. Ben and the remaining team decide that they will continue to play blackjack without Mickey who took a 50% cut, reasoning that they don't even need him. Jill is against the idea, reminding Ben that he only did this to pay for Harvard, but even though he had made enough money, he now wants to keep going. They go back to the tables and are winning, but Mickey is lurking in the shadows and tips off security. Williams takes Ben to a back room and beats him up while explaining that all casinos will soon have face recognition software so his days were numbered anyway. Ben is also told that Williams and Mickey go way back. He used to chase and beat him up too, which is why Mickey doesn't play himself anymore. Ben goes back to MIT and reads a letter saying that he is ineligible for graduation because one of his courses, taught by an associate of Mickey's, is marked as incomplete. He goes inside and finds his dorm room trashed. The money he's been stashing away is missing. He has lost everything. He visits Jill and says he doesn't want to lose her too, and apologizes for his actions back in Vegas. Ken and Miles manage to win the robotics competition even without Ben, who is there watching. He apologizes to Miles for letting him down and explains everything he's been up to and they make up. Ben goes to see Mickey and persuades him to make a final trip to Vegas before the casinos install biometric software, but this time they will all use disguises and Mickey will be the second big player to make a big return. They're in a casino, making big bets, stacking chips and enjoying themselves. They manage to profit $640,000 before William shows up. Jill signals them and they scramble, throwing chips in a bag and taking off. A chase ensues. 
They run around slot machines and enter the staff area, where Mickey convinces Ben to throw him the chips and says they should separate. Mickey manages to get out and hops into a limo. He's ecstatic, thinking he got away with all of the money, but as he opens the bag, he realizes that the chips are fake. Ben switched the real chips with fake ones while they were running. Turns out that Williams has always held a grudge against Mickey, because the last time he saw him he got away with massive gains. So he made a deal with Ben to lure Mickey back to Vegas to catch him. In turn Ben would be allowed to keep whatever they make that day, but when Ben and Jill exit the casino Williams walks up and explains that he needs the money for retirement, and Ben being as intelligent as he is will figure out a way to succeed, so he takes the bag at gunpoint. Turns out that Ben's longtime friends are also pretty good at card counting and the six-person team makes a lot of money despite Williams' robbery. As Ben is recounting this story to the scholarship director, he looks pretty damn dazzled. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.